Hi, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to look at sprite collisions. In the previous two videos, we created sprites for the bees and for our main character. And now we want to be able to kill the bees or let the bees kill us. And for this, we need sprite collision detection. But before implementing the sprite collision detection, I want to show something that I have already implemented, an attack animation for the bees. And to show this, I will make the second bee fly a little bit lower, so it will fly at the same height as our main character. And now, when the bee gets close to us, it tries to sting us. And when we move out of range, it will continue flying normally again. Attacking has no use without sprite collision detection, but that we fix later in this episode. Let's first have a look at the code for making the B attack. First we load the sprite sheet of the attack sprites. Just like in episode 1, so watch that episode if you haven't done so. And this code will make the B attack or resume flying normally. To decide whether to attack or not, we need to know the player position. If the bee is flying normally and is more or less on the same height as the player, then depending on the direction the bee is flying in, we check if the bee is in a certain range from the player before deciding to attack. But if the bee is already in the attack state, then depending on the flying direction, we check if the bee is no longer in the attacking range. To resume flying normally again. When the bee is in the attack state and it reaches the last sprite of the sprite animation, we keep showing the last sprite until the bee is no longer in the attack state. When no longer in the attack state, we are back in the flying animation state and here we reset the animation to the beginning. We could also decide not to do this. And then the B animation will keep repeating as long as the B is in a certain range of the player. Doesn't look too bad, but for now I will stick with the first solution. So let me quickly undo these changes. Okay, now it is time to work on sprite collisions. We're going to make two changes to our code that will make sprite collision detection very easy. The first thing is to make our sprite classes, the B and the Hero, derive from the Pygame sprite class. Let's start by doing this for the B. And now we derive from the Pygame sprite class, we need to initialize this parent class. Later, we will add our hero sprite object to a sprite group. And for this reason, we need to add sprite here. And one benefit of deriving from the Pygame sprite class is that we don't need to implement the draw method anymore. This one is already implemented in the parent class. And now we repeat the same steps for the hero class. So now we made both the B and the Hero derive from the Pygame sprite class. And now the second step is to create sprite groups. And the Hero and B objects that we create here, we will add to these groups. The benefit of having a sprite group is that it makes updating and drawing of sprites and sprite collisions much easier. First we create a group single for the Hero. This is a sprite group that can contain only one sprite. And because we have only one main character, we choose this group. But we can have many B sprites. So for the B sprites, we create a normal sprite group. And now we add the hero sprite instance to the sprite group like this. And we no longer need two separate B instances, we just add them to the B's sprite group.
We no longer need to update each bee individually, we just update all the bees in the group. Also for drawing, we just draw all the bees in the group instead of each of them individually. Let's do a quick test. And everything still works. Now we have a sprite group containing all the bee sprites, we can start working on the sprite collisions. I will implement the sprite collision detection in the hero class. Here, after updating the sprite position, I will call a new method. And I pass the sprite group containing all the B sprites as input parameter. And now we're about to see why sprite groups are so useful. Here, sprites collide will return a list of all the B sprites in a sprite group that collide with the hero sprite. We pass three parameters. Self is the hero sprite. Enemies is the B sprite group. And here, false means that we will not immediately destroy the B sprite after the sprite collision because we will first show an animation of the bee dying and make the bee fall from the sky. In this for loop we are going to iterate over all the bee sprites that collide with the hero sprite. So now we found the bee sprite that collides with the hero sprite. What do we do next? At this point there are two possible scenarios. The hero could be killing the bee or the bee is killing the hero. So for this reason we check the current state here, and if the current state is attack, we're going to kill the bee. Let's implement this scenario first. The following code is just some fine tuning. The sprite images may have some transparent pixels around them. So there may be some cases where the sprites already collide, but the sprite images still seem too far from each other. Here we check the overlap of the two colliding sprites. If the overlap is not enough, we ignore this sprite collision. If we wouldn't do this, killing bees would feel too easy. The number 30 is just a result of trying until it feels good. So when the sprites collide, and we are in the attack state, and we are okay with the sprite overlap, then we call the die method on the enemy. So now let's implement this method on the B class. In this method, we first check if the B isn't dying already, because dying you can do only once. And if the B wasn't dying already, we move to the dying state to trigger the dying animation and reset the frame index to start the animation from the beginning. Now let's load the sprite sheet for the dying animation. If you want to learn more about the sprite sheets and sprite animation of the bee, you should really watch episode 1. I initialize a ydeer variable here, which I will be using to make the bee fall after it dies. Just like with the attack animation, when the animation ends, I want to keep showing the last frame. And here, we will set the current animation to the dying animation in case we are in a dying state. What else will we do with the bee sprite besides showing the dying animation? I think it would be nice to make the bee fall from the sky. And to implement this, we need some vertical acceleration. Every frame, we will increment the ydeer variable with a small amount. This simulates gravity, so let's define a gravity variable. Now we update the sprite position with the ydeer variable. And ydeer is a positive value, so the sprite will be put at the lower position. And because ydeer will keep incrementing, the bee will start to fall faster and faster. Then there is one last thing to do. At a certain point we need to clean up our dead bee sprite. 
And in this case, we do it as soon as the bee has fallen outside of the window. Now let's see if we can kill a bee. The bee cannot kill us yet, because we have not implemented that part yet. But when I attack the bee, the bee dies. And I think that looks good. So now it is time to implement the part where the bee kills the player. We need to make sure that the bee cannot kill the player when the bee is already dying. Here we check the case in which the bee is coming from the right side of the player. And here we do allow a certain overlap before the bee actually kills the player. If we wouldn't do this, it would be too easy to die. And then we do the same thing for the case in which the bee is approaching from the left. So now we also need to implement the die method on the hero class. And it is similar to the die method on the bee class. Only die when not already dying. And when the hero dies, we start the dying animation from the beginning. Now let's add the dying animation of the hero. First I will copy the sprite positions of the sprites in the dev sprite sheet. And then we can load this sprite sheet. And if you want to know more details about the current implementation of this class, please watch episode 2. Now we add this new spreadsheet to the dictionary. Next we make sure that when the hero is dying, it cannot perform any actions anymore. Then we position the rect in case of the dying animation. And then finally, when the dying animation ends, I want to keep showing the last sprite in the animation. And now let's see if this all works. This time we will not attack the bee. And now when we collide with the bee, the player dies. Okay, I'm quite happy with this result. This is all I wanted to say about the sprite collision detection. I hope you'll find this interesting. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please help my channel grow by subscribing and liking my videos. Hope to see you in the next video.